morning. It is week two. So this is our second vlog. This past week, I was thinking about what kind of format this vlog's gonna end up taking. I know it's gonna be a, a journey of figuring out the various things that work. And in this process, there's gonna be things that I look back on the vlog and go, I didn't like how that worked at all, or I love how that turned out. And along the way, I'm sure I'm gonna find things that I want to add that I wish I would have added earlier, and I'll just start adding them to the, the future vlog. Yeah. So this past week, it was our first full week back from Christmas vacation. The kids were excited about that. We were all really tired. In fact, Monday, right after school, when Ben got home, he immediately got into his PJs. I think all of us went to bed early Monday because we had had just nonstop fun and staying up late, playing games with friends and family during Christmas vacation. It was a blast, but it was exhausting. Nice to get back to regular routine, but even that's challenging. Yeah, that was Monday. On Tuesday morning, we all overslept, except for Brian. All of us, I think Brian woke us up at, I don't know, like 7.15 which is more than an hour later than we all need to be up and, and moving around. So Ben missed the bus. So that same day on Tuesday, I got a text from my cousin Marn, her daughter. Since she's my cousin's daughter, that makes her my first cousin once removed. I think. So Hope, yeah, she has a class project going on right now. They live out in Virginia. In her first grade class, they have an assignment for the whole class to reach out to all their friends and family across the country and see if they can get one postcard sent to them from each state in the United States. So 50 different postcards. Seems pretty ambitious. I, I, I hope they can do it. I told her, I said, you know, we know some other people in other states as well. So if there are any states that you're lacking, please send us a note and we'll see if we can get those people to send postcards as well. So Tuesday night, Jill and I went out looking for postcards. It was surprisingly hard to find postcards. We thought maybe we might have to go to like airport gift shop or something like that in order to, to finally find one. We went to Walgreens and Walmart, some other place. We finally found a postcard, one postcard. It's the only type of postcard they had. They had a stack of them, but it was all the same kind. From Cracker Barrel, as we were just about to give up and maybe look online to order postcards. So we got that postcard, got that mailed off to Hope's first grade class out there. It was, it was fun to be a part of that to be to to help with that thursday brian and jill had their date night date nights are a thing that we do with the boys uh, all three of them is actually something that brian kind of brought up when we were working on, on one of our projects with airbnb thing that we were doing brian basically said you're too busy we're not going to be able to hang out and that really broke my heart talked to jill about it and we instituted uh date nights so that every thursday jill or myself has a date with one of the three boys and then it just goes in a, a regular rotation so it'll be both of us every other week jill and i are on a date why is this so hard to explain it just rotates so the boys every six weeks it's a full rotation between the two of them. we get one-on-ones in a six-week rotation it's really cool we've been doing this for a number of years now and it seems like just about every thursday one of the boys comes up to us and says whose date night is it they get really excited about it. brian and jill jill told me later that that Brian had some really, really cool things to say and that it was just a lot of fun. He had been uh, kind of lamenting that date nights seemed to have slacked off a little bit and during the holidays, things get weird with schedules and whatnot. As he thought about it more, he realized there were actually more dates that he had had. He just hadn't realized that he'd been on them. And so that was a, an aha moment for him. This week, I was just thinking about a lot of different ideas for things that can be put in this vlog. And I realized this vlog is a situation where I finally have a place for all of the weird random thoughts that come to mind. Will I share all of them? No, because I have too many weird random thoughts throughout the week. These would be too long. This week, a number of things that came to mind. For instance, I was fidgeting with these earlier. These are some weights. They're counterweights for a gimbal. I was playing with these this week and I was putting them down on my desk and I put the camera on the overhead and I realized as I was playing with them, I could make different shapes. But then I realized that they fit together just perfectly in a hexagon shape. And then I got to, to wondering, they, there's no other way that, a, that circles can fit together to make a, 
another shape other than a hexagon. So I was starting to wonder what's the relationship between hexagons and circles. And the videos that I looked at, I saw things of hexagons in nature, crystallization structures. It's very common for hexagons to show up. One of the ones that was most interesting to me was that beehives all end up in hexagonal shape. This kind of stuff is interesting to me. I, I, it led me down another curiosity path that got me thinking about art and the, the geometry that's used inside of art. And that led me down a path of thinking about, I don't know how I ended up on the Mona Lisa. But a really cool thing about the Mona Lisa came out as I was watching a video talking about Leonardo da Vinci and how brilliant he was and that sort of thing. In the Mona Lisa, I've heard people talk about the Mona Lisa smile. There was a movie called Mona Lisa Smile I never watched. One comment that a guy made inside of there where he talked about the fact that da Vinci was very aware of the fact that, and he studied a lot, the fact that when our eyes focus on something that's the clearest and most most detailed that we can see when we focus on a certain area and it gets very fuzzy from further on out from where we're focusing with that observation with his mastery of painting he made it so that if you focus on just her smile just her lips in the mona lisa they look kind of almost a little turned down like she's not quite smiling but if you go and you look at her lips and then let your eyes move up to her eyes you're no longer seeing her lips in perfect focus anymore and they appear to turn up and smile at you like the painting is interacting with you because of just the way that our eye works da vinci was a genius at this kind of thing and i don't know how i have lived this many years of my life and not known this fact about many of you out there who love art are probably going well you didn't know that about the mona lisa well duh that's the reason it's so famous and i didn't know but curiosity led me there. It was really cool. I've now looked at multiple different pictures of the Mona Lisa. And even just online, you can see that where you move your eyes up to her eyes. And, it, and in if you stay focused on her eyes, you'll see that you're sensing or you're seeing sort of that her smile changes into more of a smile when you look her in the eye. Um, the other thing too that I've, and this is more than just this last week, I've, I've been going down a path of playing with the, the tool of doodling. And I say tool because I didn't realize until this week that the opinions about doodling were all over the place. I've always thought of it as a cool thing, that something that is artistic and, and that sort of thing. But it's been looked down on a lot. There's people that have said, you know, doodling, it's a waste of time. It's, you means your mind's idle and you're not, do but they've actually found now in recent years, they've studied people who doodle and people who don't. They found that when doodling is not really, when you're just doing like shape patterns and things like that, and you know, flowers and whatnot, it actually helps you like when you're listening to a lecture or watching a video, or it helps you retain far more information in what you're listening listening to than the non-doodlers. The number that I kept coming across was 29% more information retention when you're doodling than for those who are not. I found that fascinating because in my work, the testing that I do, I'm online with a lot of people and I'm in meetings, conference calls, I'm taking in information from various sources and not all of it is riveting information, but I have noticed that if I continue to just let myself doodle on a piece of paper, and it doesn't have to be anything special. I mean, it's, you can see here, I just simple little goofy stuff that's like, it's nowhere close to art. It's just scribbling in some sort of pattern. I like using um, graph paper sometimes, and I'll even use different colors. This is just for the fun of it because it helps my mind stay focused. I'm able to stay focused a lot better when I doodle. I came across another video from a guy talking about the fact that he was shocked to see that on Skillshare, there are hundreds of tutorials and training programs on how to doodle. And I thought, how to doodle? Well, and then I watched what he went through in, in some of these and I realized, oh yeah, your doodling could be more fun, more satisfying with these other different techniques that people like to teach. And so it's opened up a world to me and I think I'll probably do that as, um, probably take some of those classes to help me have uh, more 
I, I call them brainless, but they're not brainless. They're helping my brain by keeping my hand busy so that I don't wander off into some other thought process while I'm in the middle of meetings and, and that type of thing. And that's really, I believe, what doodling, from, from what I've seen so far, what it does best is it helps people to not have their fidgeting and their, their mind processes taken over by other things that they could be thinking about, such as your grocery list or your other projects you need to be working on or something that's bothering you that you need to take care of. So yeah, so doodling was a, a topic of curiosity this week. And another topic of curiosity this week was I was wondering about why I like to listen to jazz music while I'm working. And I like to listen to certain types of classical music, even though I'm, I'm a fan of lots of music that's you know, songs and things like that. If there's words in there or if they remind me, if it's an instrumental of a song that I know well and I know the words, then I can't listen to those types of things while I'm working. Because a lot of what I'm working on, I'm dealing with, with logic and code and things like that. And I can't focus on, I, I need something musically it's almost like my mind needs to doodle in music, if, if that makes any sense. My mind needs something to engage with that doesn't connect to my logical thinking, walk through stuff in my work. You know, whether it's code or having to write documentation or even planning out a video for training someone on something technical. So yeah, so that's been my week of curiosity this week. The stuff with doodling and the Mona Lisa and jazz all that has been really cool I've shared that with with Jill and with the boys some um, the boys are kind of sort of interested but you know that's another reason why I do these recordings like this because they're they'll be more interested in this type of stuff when they reach my age which is going to take another 30 years or so so that's it for week two we'll catch you next week bye